largely upon what depends largely about the tracks where the nerve signals or what the nerve endings end in specific areas of the brain. The somatic sensations, the somatic sensations can be classified into different classifications. But the most important one is the somatic sensations can be classified into mechanoreceptive sensations, thermoreceptive sensations, and nociceptive sensations. The mechanoreceptive sensations, like sensations of touch, tickling, pressure and so on while the thermoreceptive sensations like feeling with hot feeling with heat sorry cold and so on while nociceptive nociceptive means the sensations of pain sensations of pain and in relation with that we have to the to speak about the receptor The nerve receptor, the nerve receptor, we are speaking now about the nerve receptor, not about the cellular receptors. The nerve receptor usually is about a nerve ending, a nerve ne ending. And this nerve ending, this nerve ending responds to specific stimulus. Or sometimes the receptor is not nerve ending. It is a specific organ. Specific organ. So the receptor, the nerve receptor, is either a specific organ or nerve ending. An example about organ, organ that act as a receptor, is, is what? The taste buds. The taste buds, which are responsible for receiving, receiving information about taste gustation and also the organ of corti the organ of corti which is the receptor for hearing so in terms of receptor how can receptors how can different receptors respond to specific stimuli each receptor has its own specific stimulus and it is called the adequate stimulus so what what is the adequate stimulus the adequate stimulus is the form of energy the form of energy that can stimulate that receptor for example the cones and rods cones and rods in the eye in the retina of the eye are the receptors for light for electromagnetic wave it is form of energy of course and organ of corti in the ears is the receptor for hearing sound and so on for example the receptors for sensation tactile sensations are receptors for mechanical mechanical form so how can these receptors respond the receptors usually respond by different ways usually by change change in chemical structure or in the chemical structure or in the tissue structure of the receptor tissue structure of the receptor these changes that occur within the receptor will cause also chemical change ionic change permitting to 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 what to create action potential or potentials potentials in the receptor itself this potential or these potentials which are created in the receptor are called receptor 
14 shots or generator 14 shots so what is the receptor potential or generator potential generator potential for example for example when i press on somebody um, or hand sorry so he will feel with what he will feel with a uh, feeling of pressure so what what has occurred here this pressure will cause dislocation dislocation in a specific receptor here which is called Pacinian corpuscle we will explain Pacinian corpuscle Pacinian corpuscle is about specific receptor for pressure so after pressure is being applied here this pressure will cause dislocation dislocation of tissue folds of the Pacinian corpuscle and these dislocations will change the permeability of the membranes of Pacinian corpuscle allowing for what for entrance of sodium ions when sodium ions enter will cause generation of potentials but they are not action potentials they are not action potential they are generator potential potentials within the receptor itself and these potentials are graded non propagated graded non propagated and do not obey the all or none law the all or none law and can be some weight and by this way the generator potential or the receptor potential differs from action potential action potential is propagated that means travels throughout the axons it obeys obeys and must obey the all or none law the all or none law simply means that action potential is created or not depend on adequate stimulus so if the stimulus is not adequate so action potential cannot be generated this is simply the law of all or none law so what is the difference between the receptor potential and action potential receptor potential is localized within the receptor itself receptor potential is not propagated cannot propagate to other area receptor potential does not obey all or law or none law in other words even even small frequencies of stimulus can cause potential while action potential is propagated can be summated and obeys all or none law let's speak now about our example which is the Pacinian corpuscle 